Hello, this is a Van der Graaff generator. Uh, this is typical of the ones you find in schools. It's quite small, uh, it's not frighteningly well designed, uh, it's rather dirty, it only gets called on maybe once or twice a year to do anything. Um, this, on the other hand, is the one I normally use in shows. It's, uh, as you see, much larger, it's massive, it's shiny, um, it works remarkably well, and uh, it goes like a train. Firstly, a little bit about this one. Um, it has got a few design flaws, I have to admit. The electric motor that drives it is in here. You don't need an electric motor, and they could have used a better one than they did on this, because uh, it looks like it came off a model boat, and then there's a transformer and a rectifier in there to turn it into DC. It drives through a little plastic uh, doodah that does have a tendency to slip. The, the belt is open, as you can see, which is a brilliant way of picking up all sorts of muck. Um, the pulleys are at least uh, ball bearinged but the axles they drive on are, are rather curious. And the combs are uh, made of bits of metal that have got lots of little holes in them. Um, but it does at least work, but hopefully I'll be able to show you one of its major design faults. One is, it's either on or off. There is no um, variable speed, but here we go. Now you might notice it does make rather a noise. That's because it's not all aligned properly and there's not much you can do about that, but it does at least produce a car. Although, frankly, not a fierce one. shows, as you can see it's much larger than the other one. Um, very unusual type as well, I know of uh, two others, one I saw in the background on an eBay shot and uh, one that uh, features a piece of alien technology on an episode of Doctor Who. Um, basically, big rubber band goes round and round, driven by an electric motor, this one is off a sewing machine I think and has variable speed. There's a pulley at the top, pulley at the bottom, they're made of different stuff. Uh, the rubber band in this case, on this one, is um, uh, an exercise band. Uh, you don't need an electric motor, you could make one powered by a hamster wheel, it's the fact that it goes round is what really, really matters. And uh, it's a, a, a wonderful and exciting machine to, to play with because it normally uh, works an absolute treat. Um, I'll just show you some of the important bits of the machine and then I'll, um, I'll uh, show you a quick demonstration. I'm not going to do a huge amount of demonstrations because in here there's simply not enough room and if you want to see some uh, then look at some of my videos of shows that I've done. Here's the maker's mark as you can see it says uh, Van de Graaff generator WBN Scotland. Um, I know nothing about the company WBN I can find out very little on the internet um, so I have no idea of the age of the machine I would guess it's possibly 1950s even. Um, if you do know anything um, please let me know. Here we have the bottom end of the machine. You can see the drive belt, that's the black bit on the left, and the main belt going round. There's a pulley, uh, in this case made of perspex, and you can see the lower comb. Now, uh, the comb here is made out of a piece of wire that I put bits of nails through and then soldered on. Fundamentally, uh, they need to be points. It's very common to find these machines set up with the combs actually touching the belts. They shouldn't. People always think these work, things work by friction. It's not really. It's more a question of them coming into contact, the, the belt and the pulley, and then coming apart again. It produces a charge separation through the wonder of tribolo electrification. Um, pick the right materials, you get quite a big effect. You can use all sorts of things as combs. Um, I've used, uh, seen bits of uh, grid-type material, uh, ones like this. Um, you can even use a sharp metal edge. As long as it's sharp, sharp certainly seems to get the uh, effect to work better. Now, this is the top end of the machine. You can see a, a similar comb. You can see the pulley arrangement. Um, I, this machine is handy because you can alter the belt tension very easily and the belt angle so it doesn't go running off all over the place, which is annoying and I will break it too. Um, this machine, you don't actually need the comb. If I take the combs off, I get an arc going from the top pulley to the metal housing around it. Um, but it does seem to work really 
quite well with that on. And it makes it less pulsy as well. The On this one it's got aluminium pulley on the top and perspex on the bottom. If you swap those over you swap the polarity of the machine. They seem to work better this way round. Um, I think it's because of losses with the, the other arrangement. Uh, it's this way this one charges so the top is negative relative to the bottom. Um, now I'll fire it up now and uh, we'll uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to see it, it doing something. I can immediately feel the feel of my hair starting to go. Um, for a long time I've taken the, the spark myself, which is alright provided you don't have a weak heart, but it's best off the point off the body. Uh, now on the human body there is a very large point that is quite easy to use one of these, but you do need to be careful. And it is of course the elbow. Hopefully you'll be able to see I'm getting some quite bright, exciting sparks hitting me in the elbow. I can feel it, but you kind of get used to it. Thank you very much for watching.